Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sophie Newman Sanders, and the audience is my colleague, Amy Ashley. Um, we're here today to pitch Zindigi, the mobile app that allows people in developing countries to find doctors, book appointments, and access their health records and insights. Sounds pretty simple, right? Much like Dr. Ali or Babylon or ZocDoc or any one of the hundreds of Find a Doctor apps out there, right? Wrong. And I will come on to why in a second. In the last few years, there's been unprecedented growth in the number of smartphone users from 1.06 billion in 2012 up to what will be 2.2 billion by 2016. This increase has fueled a similar increase in the number of mobile services being provided across all major industry groups, including healthcare. Indeed, the mobile health market is set to be worth $58.8 billion by 2020. But what does the growth of mobile health really mean for the healthcare industry? Well, for people um, like you and me, it means self-care. For healthcare professionals, it means the ability to operate an almost entirely virtual patient care plan. And for healthcare providers, it means a dramatic reduction in the overheads traditionally associated with healthcare provision, freeing up capital to invest in new technologies, salaried healthcare professionals, and the procurements of medication and treatment. Sounds pretty great, right? Well, there is a problem, and it's this, that for the people who need healthcare services the most, i.e. the two billion people who currently sit below the poverty line, the problem is not the inability to comprehend or facilitate a digital or technology revolution, but rather to access the technology in the first place. For example, in Pakistan, which has uh, one of the fastest growing mobile industries in the world, although over 80% of the 191 million people in the country technically has access to a mobile phone, only 12% of these have smartphones and 36% are illiterate. Um, the same is true for much of the developing world. So what are the potential solutions? Well, in the past, people have tried charitable aid, but projects are short-term, resource-intensive, and hampered by bureaucracy, government-led initiatives, but governments are transient and shackled by procurement processes and political warfare, smartphone-only solutions, but as demonstrated previously, these really only benefit existing smartphone users. Q Zindigi. Now, on the face of it, Zindigi is a pretty conventional Find a Doctor app. Sure, it's beautifully designed, and the user interface is fantastically contemporary. Yes, it emphasizes function over fashion, and of course, its data insights are second to none. But that isn't what makes Zindigi a game-changing app. No. What makes Zindigi a game-changing, world-beating, industry-disrupting app is this. Zindigi is seamlessly integrated with a spoken dialogue management system that allows people to call from any device, a landline, a feature phone, and interact with the app as though they were tapping away on their smartphones. Uh, it is unmanned, it is multilingual, and it learns much faster than a person how to respond to queries. What this means is that people in developing countries can find doctors, book appointments, access test results and prescriptions without having a mobile phone, in fact, without having any inter internet connection at all. Um, we've partnered with Vocal IQ, a Cambridge-based startup, um, recently purchased by Apple for the spoken dialogue management system and with Crescendo Systems for the clinical dictation and multiple language models. Um, Zindigi, which means life in Urdu, is backed by the federal government of Pakistan and a number of other high-profile brand ambassadors, including Javed Miandad, Pakistan's greatest ever cricketer, and Salim Safi, the country's leading journalist. Our team includes the ex-vice president of GeoTV, that's the equivalent of TVN Ventures here, and the stand-in federal IT minister for Pakistan. Um, plus Asif Kassim, PhD cardiologist and founder of MedChair, who is a clinical QA and active board advisor. To date, we have invested the equivalent of 7,328 hours or 229,299 pounds in the project. We are looking for 650,000 pounds to market Zindagi post-launch in Pakistan and 7.2 million up to over three years to launch in India, Bangladesh, Nigeria, Kenya and Rwanda. Thank you very much. Now is the time for questions. Yes, hello. Um, Hi. Yeah, thank you for the pitch. It was very intensive. Uh, I, I got a little uh, uh, curious or, or maybe disordered because you were talking about an app, then you said that there are no uh, smartphones, and then, you, then I understood if I was to write this more a back end thing than an app, or, you know, because I, I really didn't get the so beef. There's a mobile application that is accessible, so a mobile application for people, and then there's a web-based application for doctors which interact. So for people with smartphones, which is about 10 to 12% of the population, they can access the mobile application. The point is that there are many more people who don't have smartphones. So for those people, they can call from their regular phones or from their landlines, and they interact with a spoken dialogue management system that provides them with the same information that they get using the mobile app. Okay. And how do you make money? Um, I'm glad you asked. So, there are four revenue streams associated with this project, uh, product, I should say. 
Um, the first is a commission on all appointments that are booked actually through the application, so booked and paid for using Zindagi. The second is a percentage or a margin that we take on the freemium models. Um, we have a patient and a doctor freemium model. Um, the third uh, is through anonymized data insights. We're in discussions with people like Sanofi at the moment, so we would provide anonymous data to them for a monthly fee. And then for answers to customer surveys, a pharmaceutical will typically pay up to £15,000 per question if you have a user base of over 60,000 users. And, uh, hi. What's hi. your current status? So at the moment, we are in the process of launching in Pakistan. It will go live in December. It will be launched by the federal government. Um, when it is launched, it will be in minimum viable product format. So people will be able to find doctors and book appointments um, and they will be able to do that through the mobile app or using the spoken dialogue management system. Phase two, which completes at the end of February, will allow doctors to have the full um, electronic medical record, and that will be integrated with the patient's end. Phase three will add some additional features um, and will incorporate the, the uh, revenue streams three and four as they're currently listed there once we've built the user base. And uh, in terms of the market, so uh, you are starting in Pakistan and yep. since it, uh, as far as I understand, India is the next one, right? Or not? Yes, so we're mm -hmm. hoping to launch in Bangladesh and India. So the reason we want to launch there, actually India has a competitor app called Librate, which um, has a user base at the moment of about 500,000 people, but it doesn't have the spoken dialogue management element, so it's limited only to smartphone users. The same is true of Nigeria, which has the world's fastest growing mobile population, and Kenya, and many other northern African or sub-Saharan African countries. So the idea is that there is money in this, and there's a lot of money in developing countries, not necessarily from the poorest people, but from pharmaceuticals and other companies that operate there. We want to tap into that and bring healthcare services using all of the different technologies out there to the people who can't afford to pay for them. And do you have uh, any like numbers in terms of markets and your potential revenues? Yeah, so again, the detail I'd be happy to discuss with you offline. Um, but the up to 7.2 million is based on our anticipated revenue over the six countries by the end of 2018. And it, it assumes that in Pakistan, which we're using as a starting point, we'll have 120,000 people um, live on the application only, which is 0.1% of the population, 50,000 doctors. There are 192, 15,000 doctors, I should say, sorry. There are 192,000 registered doctors and specialists in Pakistan. Um, I'm just hi. I'm just wondering on, about the Mrs. model because, um, if I understood correctly, you are focusing yep. on public healthcare system or private he healthcare system. So again, we went to a very good talk yesterday, which mm -hmm. said that in order to make something a mass market product, you have to make it appealing to an, a specialized and exclusive market first, because this is the market that will be willing to test your product. So in the first six months, we're targeting only private institutions. Um, which still constitute about 20% of the Pakistan population. Okay, okay. Um, I'll, st I'll stop you there. Um, so, yeah. because you said that you are trying to expand. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry, I'd be happy to take more questions afterwards. Thank you very much. Uh, so now we have, yeah, round of applause. Yeah. <laughs>